The Detroit Pistons just had one of the worst seasons in franchise history, which included the longest losing streak in the history of the NBA. So they have a big offseason ahead of them. Today, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a preview of what they've got to do this year in the offseason, such as the NBA draft, their key free agents, and looking ahead to next year, uh, as well as some of the guys I think they should sign and their cap space situation. Um, so make sure you stick around for the full videos. We cover all of those things. But first, got to look at their current outlook. They really have six guys that they can continue to play on a constant basis for the next few years. Cade Cunningham being one. Uh, his rookie extension will be kicking in soon, but he's averaging 22.7 points per game, 7.5 assists, 4.3 rebounds in 34 minutes a night. Really nice year. Three from Cade, who broke the 20-point-per-game mark for the first time in his career. 45% shooting from the field, which was up 3%, and then... The big story was 36% from three, which was up 8% from last year. Still 22 years old, so like I said, due for that rookie extension before long, but very exciting to watch this year. Jaden Ivey averaged 15.4 points, 3.5 rebounds, 3.9 assists in 28 minutes per game this year. Another former top five pick on this roster that will be getting his rookie extension soon. Um, the numbers for him weren't quite as promising, though. Still only 34% from three on five attempts. Uh... 43% from the field, up one, but nothing crazy. You got Azar Thompson, who in his rookie season averaged 8.8 .8 points per game, 6.4 rebounds, 2 assists in 25 minutes a night. This, he's one of the most athletic players in the NBA already. 48% um, from the field, but 19% from three. Not going to lie, that's a bit scary. A steal and a block per game, though. He's an elite defender that really needs to work on that offensive game a lot. Jalen Duran, 14 points, 12 rebounds, 2.4 assists. Um, really, really good young center in the league. Kind of looks like Andre Drummond, um, you know, wearing that zero in Detroit. But hoping he has a little bit more longevity to his NBA career as you see the numbers there. So now for the draft portion of things, we're here on Fanspo. And I think the obvious pick for the Detroit Pistons here is going to be Alex Saar. You could look at, like, Zachary Rizache, and honestly, I wouldn't hate that. But I think Alex Saar is consensus number one. It's definitely between these two. Maybe if you want to look into Cody Williams, that's cool. But the big need is wing scoring, three-point shooting, anybody on the wing. They were starting Kevin Knox for half the year. Anybody on the wing that can score the ball, Fournier is probably gone. They got a great wing defender in Azar Thompson. So I wouldn't hate Reza Shea, but I am going to go out and get Alex Saar here. Um, if I'm the Pistons, I'm declining the team option on James Wiseman, which we're about to talk about. Um... And then you got Isaiah Stewart, Jalen Duran to play the five, and you got Alex Saar to plug in here at the four. I think he's more of a traditional four. He can shoot the ball a little bit, and I think he will develop into that um, very well here in Detroit. So with the first overall pick, I will have the Pistons selecting Alex Saar. Now they are guaranteed a top five pick, so if they don't get number one, I think they target Reza Shea or Cody Williams later on down the board. If things get really bad, Maybe you trade down and go for a Dalton Connect or a Jacoby Walter because you just need shooting on the wing. That's the number one weakness for the Pistons this year. So now let's look at the guys that will be leaving Detroit this year. They're key free agents. Um, none of these guys are really key to this team. You know, they could bring back Quentin Grimes. He's the only guy I'm thinking about that maybe they do bring back. But in a very small sample size for the Pistons, he did not produce at all. So maybe you give him a little bit more of a chance. He's on that team option. Um, Evan Fournier has a $19 million team option, which I'm willing to bet the house on that that gets declined for the 31-year-old that had horrible shooting splits in Detroit. And then James Wiseman um, wouldn't be shocked to see his uh, team option get declined as well. You know, maybe they keep him around, but I, you know, not, not, not too crazy about it. The rookie extensions this year, Cade will be needing one, like we said. Uh, he'll be on the last year of his contract. And then they got a $4.5 million team option on Jalen Duran, which will be getting picked up, and then they will be extending him very shortly unless they are absolutely crazy. Um, now, looking ahead to free agency, looking at some of the free agent targets this year for the Pistons. These are all guys that I've identified, guys that can shoot the three ball and can defend on the wing. 
Number one, the guy that I really want them to get to pair with Azar Thompson is Kelly Oubre Jr. Definitely going to be a very sought after free agent this year after putting up 15.4 points per game, five rebounds, 1.1 steals on 45% shooting from the field, 31% from three for a winning team. We'll see if he can increase his stock, make a little money in the playoffs. Then you got Gary Trent Jr., who had a bit of a down year this year on the stat sheet, but as a free agent, wouldn't be... Or I would be shocked if the Raps don't bring him back, given what he just put up at age 25. But if he does hit the open market, Detroit needs to pounce on this ASAP. Again, they need to pair some shooting with Azar Thompson on the wing, and Buddy Heald gives them another chance to do that. You see the numbers for Buddy this year. Very efficient three-point shooter, 39% from three on seven attempts. That's what you love to see. But he only played in about 24 minutes a game. Per 36, he was averaging 17, four and a half, and four. Great veteran to bring in here to help nurture this young core. Malik Beasley, another guy here that I think could really help this Pistons team because of his shooting ability. Um, he's averaging 11.3 points, 3.7 rebounds currently for the Bucks, 41% from three on seven attempts a game. And again, just a lot of guys. That's the two, the biggest need for the Pistons is guys that can shoot it on the wing. They need a backup point guard. Wouldn't be shocked to see them target Monte Morris or Chris Dunn. For cheap, um, again, Cade Cunningham, the only point guard they have on this roster right now after they let go of the GOAT, Killian Hayes. So one of these two guys you could bring in. Um, and then some backup bigs as well. You know, they have Isaiah Stewart. Maybe they keep James Wiseman, but in the case they don't, maybe you look at a potential reunion with Andre Drummond or you bring in Mason Plumley. Also a potential reunion there, uh, but I wouldn't hate bringing Mason Plumley in. Um, I-, I like his game a lot as a backup big. Thought he would fit in better down in uh, LA but the Pistons have 59 million dollars in cap space I wouldn't you know maybe they don't spend it all this offseason but I'd like to see them spend at least like 45 of it um, to go with that number one overall pick and you can really build a roster out of that right now you're looking at the current core that they have these six guys are their top six going forward these are the guys that will for sure be on the team next year and then you need to add about four to five guys that you know can give you quality minutes to this roster Taking a look at what I've come up with from this video, you know, a lineup of Cade, Kelly Oubre Jr., Azar Thompson, Jalen Dern, and Alex Saar. That would be a really nice lineup for the Pistons to have next year. Maybe it doesn't compete for a playoff spot right away, but you sign Oubre to like a 2 plus 1 deal, have him for the next three years potentially if he plays well, and this roster grows and develops together and over time turns into a playoff caliber team. You know, you could still address the bench on down the road, but here's what you have. I would like to see Jaden Ivey coming off the bench if they do sign a really good shooter off the wing. Um, and then you have that shooter plus Azar. And if you do go the Alex Saar route, then you have him at the power forward spot. But overall, this is what the bench could look like next year in Detroit. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do like these offseason preview videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Stick around because we will be doing one for every single NBA team this offseason. Trying to hit 100 likes on today's video, so if you could help us out with that, it would be greatly appreciated. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video.